Don't buy a capture card. Why? Don't buy a capture card. Because NDI? Oh. Look, we've all had the conversation before about capture cards. Yes, they're the easiest way to capture one thing and putting it on another thing. Mainly being a games console or a gaming computer and bringing it over to a streaming PC. But when you're only starting off streaming, it mightn't be the best solution. You don't want to drop anywhere between 50 to 100 quid on a decent capture card. Now, yes, you can go over to Amazon and you can pick something up for anywhere between 5 to 50 quid and it's, it's going to be okay. It'll do the job. It will get your screen from this and put it there. But that doesn't mean it's going to look any good. You're better off investing that 30 to 50 quid in somewhere else such as maybe a better webcam maybe some lighting my studio lights only cost me 30 quid each for example and there's other ways to get around doing this now of course you will need a capture card for the most part if you're playing off of a games console in this scenario we're talking about bringing computer one screen over to computer two screen so that way you can maybe offload some of your rendering from let's say your gaming computer that might not be too good to a little computer that you have lying around that you know it'll be okay for encoding 720p at 30 fps this is a really viable option for a lot of beginner streamers it's what i initially done when i started streaming i only had a ryzen 3 and a gt 1030 it could play the games that i wanted to play but if I wanted to do anything more than 72060 on Twitch, I was shit out of luck. But that was when I had the idea that I had another gaming PC that had some whatever bug standard GT710 from Nvidia. More importantly, it had an AMD FX6300, which was a three core, six thread CPU, but I knew that was gonna be enough to be able to stream at 72060. So obviously I went the initial route that most people do, and I started looking at capture cards. At the time, it really just wasn't an option for me to be completely honest with you. So I went to bed that night, it was about 2, 3 a.m. feeling down. I was like, there has to be another way we can do this. And that was when I discovered NDI. And NDI was absolutely fantastic for me when I was getting started off before I bought a capture card and everything like that. But now there's an even easier way than NDI. Look, NDI is fantastic. I'm not talking bad about it, nothing like that. But how most people set it up with an OBS plugin it just hasn't been updated in like two years. It literally hasn't been updated since I started streaming those years ago. So there's a new plugin called OBS Teleport. You have two systems running OBS and you can tell one OBS to display to the other OBS as long as they're on the same network. So as long as these two computers are connected up either Wi-Fi or Ethernet, as long as they're going to the same router, you can get this sent over and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. It's super quick. As all these videos go, you have to download a plugin. So this is only gonna work on standard OBS and it's not going to work on Streamlabs or anything else. The link will be in the description for OBS Teleport. And what you wanna do is you just wanna go over here, click on download, and then you just wanna download the OBS Teleport.zip. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is extract it. And then once the file has been extracted, you're gonna see this folder. And if you're on Windows, you just want to double click on the OBS Teleport. It's going to ask where's your OBS installed. Just keep clicking next. Nine times out of ten, this is all going to be default. But it is nice to know that they do also support Mac OS and Linux too. So you guys aren't out of this. On your gaming PC, you just want to relaunch your OBS after installing the plugin. If your OBS was open when you installed it, just close it down, open it back up. You want to navigate over here to your tools. And then you want to go to OBS Teleport right here. From here then, you just have a few options. You want to set up an identifier so you know what it is on your other PC. I'm going to call this send because this is the one that we're sending. We have a quality slider. You can max it up to 100 if you want. That's what we can do. And then the port, you can completely leave that alone. Now, the other part is then is when you get over to the receiving PC. Now, so basically what I'm after doing is on my Surface Book 3, it's sending it out. So let's say this is your streaming PC. What you want to do is go over to sources, right click, add a new. Then you should be able to find teleport right here. Just go and call this whatever. So we'll just call this gaming PC, just so you know what it's called. If you refresh the list, you should then be able to see the initial one that you've set up. If we, we click, click that, that, press, press okay. okay. And, and now, now you can see, see this is exactly what my Surface Book is looking at. So, so as you can tell by the two cameras, cameras there is a little bit of delay, but, but this, this is all completely wireless. My, my laptop is connected in with the ethernet. Well, my Surface Book is just right here in my hands. 
So you could even use this for some IRL streaming going around your house. And, and we're still over here, here and, and it's all getting sent there. there. How cool is that? Anyone else surprised about the amazing camera quality on a Surface Book that came out in 2014? <laughs> but that's it, there's no buying capture cards unless you really have to get one for let's say a games console. Super quick, two computers, both running OBS, both having this plugin installed, one sending and one receiving. That's all it takes. It's been Tomo for IRL. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and all that juicy, juicy stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.